watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host, and we have switched up Greater Brockton in this fall season to bring on the candidates for City Council, School Committee, Councilor at Large, and Mayor for the September 19th preliminary election. I have here in studio uh, Gary Keith. Welcome, Gary. How, do, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you again for having me in. Gary Keith, third time. Is third time going to be a charmer this time? We sure hope so. With God's blessings, yes. Okay. Councilor at Large. Councilor at Large. Um, you've run before, and you are a member of the Brockton Planning Board. Yes, I am. And you're also the Zoning Board? Yes, I am. Correct? Okay. Four so, years now on so both. So those are very comprehensive, very... Um, time-consuming committees. You spent a lot of time sitting there listening to plans and developments and Correct. variances and all that stuff. Yes. Okay, so you're a glutton for punishment. You want to do more <laughs> and you want to be a city council. I actually do, okay. yes. Okay, tell us why. You know, I've helped out when I first ran, basically I just wanted to, it was like the, the, the civic thing to do, mm -hmm. okay, for, my, for the city of Brockton, the city I live in, the city I love. Um, I knew, I didn't know too much about it at that time there. When I jumped in, I learned on the fly, and uh, it was a good lesson. We want to make a difference, and after that first election, the mayor appointed me to the uh, planning board, and it was uh, approved by the council, the full council, and from there, they sent me to the zoning board. And once you get entrenched in it, you hear, the, you know, some of the people's uh, Sit different situations when they come forth, you know, in front of them, whatever the situation might be, and you really want to help, you know. So sometimes you have to make the hard decisions of granting a variance or, you know, something like that. But in the end, it's all worth it. Mm -hmm. So issues on the horizon, issues change. You've run three different election cycles, okay? Yes, I have. This time, slightly different. There mm -hmm. are three people that presently hold the seat. Yes. And Council Shana Barnes decided that she was not going to run for re-election. So mm -hmm. now there's a quote-unquote open seat. Now, Correct. if you're like me, mm -hmm. all the seats are open, even if someone's Correct. in them. Correct. But it's hard to beat an incumbent. So yes, now you've got one, one gone. Mm -hmm. You have three running again. Issues like uh, we, talked, we talked power plant quite a bit in the last mm -hmm. couple of elections. It's still out there. It's, we, we don't know where it's going to go, but here's the, the latest one, and it was talked about the last campaign cycle. Mm -hmm. Desal. Right. Desal or maybe MWRA. What's your thinking on that issue? You know, again, that's a very good question, and, and the answer I have for that basically is that we need that secondary water source, okay? There's no way around it. And right now we've been, like you said, we've tossed the desal um, plant back and forth. MWRA, I think their rates are a little bit too high for what we're trying to do. Unfortunately, we're paying $6 million a year for water that we're not using. Um, I can lean into the, a little bit of the plan of us purchasing it and trying to sell it off. The problem I am having with it, though, is the price. It's the cost of, of getting it. Um, I think it's a smart move, if we can get it for the right price, to actually have our own water and if we, can, uh, if we can sell it to the uh, surrounding communities. And the job that I currently hold as a uh, salesman and a negotiator for a box Chevrolet, I would be willing to step up and try to uh, negotiate you know, with the surrounding towns to uh, help us sell off that water if we were to purchase it. Now, you mentioned um, when you ran before, you got appointed by the mayor and yes. confirmed by the council. Correct. Okay. What about relationships and interrelationships? How important is it for the city councilors and the mayor to work together and the city councilors and the city councilors to work together? It's, what do you think? It's very important. Um, and that's, that's second to none. It's very important. At the end of the day, I'm not looking to be a city council to make friends with the city council. I can work with anyone, you know, um, and I'm cordial with everyone. You know, I can get along with almost anyone. My main thing is, is that we, as an appointed, if I'm appointed as a city councilor, we are there to actually work together to come to a, a decision one way or the other. And I'm willing to work with anybody on anything, and I'm willing to listen to whatever they have to say without turning a deaf ear to it. Um, not only the council, but to the mayor. I believe that, you know, we, can, we still have a lot of strides to, to do here in the city. I believe that we have made a lot of strides also in the last four years. I mean, if you look around us, we have a lot of good projects that have come forth. You know, um, 
that the mayor has done, that the council has approved, uh, the planning board and the zoning board have uh, um, chimed in with that too on their approval. Communication is the key. And I think that if you can't get it passed the first time, don't give, it, don't give up and push it off the table. Let's work on it. Let's talk you know, behind closed doors that we have to. Let's make something viable come out of it. Now, the new comprehensive plan, the master plan, a lot of public input, public participation. Yes. You must be proud as a member of the planning board about that whole process. I am. I'm very proud of that. I actually, um, when we um, made the final decision the other day to present it to the, uh, to let it go forth to the full council, I was the one that actually uh, made the motion to accept it because uh, I am very proud of it. Uh, we, we, a lot of work went into it from all aspects and uh, a lot of different people here in the city and I think every single last one of them need to be applauded for what they put into it. Now you're a pretty positive person, I okay, am. from what I can tell you. Usually I see you have a big smile on your face, mm -hmm. um, unless bad things happen every once in a while. But um, how important is being a cheerleader and promoting the city of Brockton. We, this city gets a bad rap. I, I have friends from outside of the city, mm -hmm. and I get mad at them if they say anything bad about Brockton. Right. You probably do too. You know, I don't get mad. I don't get mad. It, it's, you know, it hurts sometimes because I know differently, you know, but then I educate them, you know. We're a big major city. What do we have, 98, 99,000 people? Or Depends on which number you call <laughs> right. it, but that's okay. The thing is that we're a major city, and we have problems just like any other uh, major city. But I believe that our crime is um, it's a pocket size. It's, it's, a, it's a group. It's one particular group, you know, basically. I mean, the majority of our crime is coming from that group. You know, um, can we diminish it a little bit? Yeah, I think we can do some things to actually uh, um, deter it a little bit. But um, we have a great city here. We have great people in this city. We have great neighborhoods. Um, one thing I always liked about being an American, being a, a U.S. Army veteran, is that at times like 9-11, I like the American uh, resolve. I like the way we come together. You know, we may have our differences in our, in our opinions and things like that, but when, when it comes down to it, we come together as one. And Brockton, in Brocktonians, we're there for each other. We're there to support people. I see a lot of... Uh, groups, you know, cleaning up the parks. They come together to clean up the parks. They come together when a family's in need, you know, and that's what Brockton's all about. And that's what people outside of Brockton don't see. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't get that positive view of Brockton like, like we know uh, what exists. So all they hear about in the news basically is this or that or whatever, but they don't hear about the positive things. And for that reason, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I love Brockton. Seeing the signs mm -hmm. all over the city, you're talking experience matters. That's your slogan this time. You've changed the slogan up a couple of times. I have. Tell me why you're, you're using that slogan. Well, the first time I ran, it was transition for change. Mm -hmm. it means let's get ready for that change. The second time was I am Brockton because I walked in a lot of shoes, as I explained to you on the last show. And with my four years of being on the planning board and the zoning board and um, working from time to time with the city council and with the mayor and um, helping a lot of other um, outside uh, projects, um, I've gained that experience. I think that makes me one of the most uh, experienced candidates in this at-large race outside of the incumbents. Um, you know, we've, we've all given our, our, our heart and passion to it, which is why we're running. No one can dispute that on any of the candidates. But the four years on the planning board and the four years on the zoning board, I think, uh, sets me apart. From the, from the rest of the candidates, again, outside of the, um, the incumbents that are in there right now, that they have that experience because that's where they're at. So experience does matter. Now, what are you hearing out on the campaign trail? What are the issues of the people? And I want to make sure, I just got the five-minute queue. We're sure. probably at four. I want to give you a couple of minutes at the end to give us your basic information, like your website, your phone number, how to get sure. in touch with you. What are you hearing out there? What's the number one, number two issue? Transparency. Mm-hmm. People want to be able to reach their counselors. Some of the people don't know who their counselors are, okay? Um, they have seen me out there for, the, uh, for four years outside of the planning board and the zoning board. They see me in the communities as a community activist, and they have my number. They called me for many uh, of situations and stuff, and I've been there for them. So 
the biggest thing is that transparency. Um, and the other thing I say is consistency. This is the third election here, and I've been consistent all along the, the road. I have not flip-flopped on how, what I felt and what I said from the first election to now. And um, so I think experience matters. I think transparency matters. And I think consistency matters. That's good. Now, you talked about the contact information. Mm -hmm. Before you go into your, you could forget I'm here and talk to the, the voters. Phone number, website, I know you have Facebook too. Tell, yes. tell us. Well, I'm Gary Keith Sr., a long time, 27 year uh, resident of the city of Brockton. And the reason why I'm asking you for your vote is because of the things that I just said. Our city right now is a great city and we need to still make it better um, for the quality of life for each and every last one of us. And that's why I rolled up my sleeves. That's why I jumped in four years ago. I have the experience. I have the, the passion. I have um, all the ingredients I think to need, I need, we need to get along with the rest of the councilors that are there, to get along with the mayor, and to push this city forward. I'm asking you, the citizens of Brockton right now, to actually um, vote for me on September 7th. There won't be a primary this year here, but um, you know, inter if you want to reach me, I can be reached at 508-232-5797 or on my email, which is gman, G-M-A-N, 02301 at yahoo.com or at Facebook, Gary Keith Senior City Councilor at Large. And I thank you for your op this opportunity to represent you and to serve you in this election. Thank you. Well, Gary, thanks for coming in. We're going to have you back uh, closer to the November election, and we'll do a debate, mm -hmm. a real debate, with all the councilors at large. We've yes. done them before. We've fit up to 15, 16 people in the studio. It's going to be a little <laughs> easier with eight, <laughs> yes. a lot easier with eight. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk issues. And, and once we get past the preliminary election, which there isn't a council at large preliminary, so Correct. we won't see your name on the ballot in September. Right. But in November, before that, we'll have you back on another, another show, different shows that Brockton Community Access mm -hmm. volunteers produce. So you'll have an opportunity. We'll make sure everybody has your name. And... Uh, Enjoy the campaign trail. I can tell that Thank you, you do. Yeah, I do. Thank you, Brockton. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for all the candidates, all the races for mayor, council at large, city council, and school committee right here in the City of Champions. Most of all, make sure you educate yourself about all the voters and you do get out and vote. Prelimin preliminary election is important because if you don't vote in the preliminary, you don't get a choice who you vote for in November, and then go on to November. So keep watching Brockton Community Access, and have a good evening.